Here we go. All right. Well, gosh, welcome everyone. How we doing out there? Everybody have a nice Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good deal. I, uh, I did not do turkey. My family took a vote and we did sea bass and filet. <laughs> so that's the first time we ever did non-traditional, but it was kind of fun. So anyway, I literally just got my kitchen ungreased from little grandchildren's mitts. I was going with my little uh, Windex. That's what I use all the time. Anyway, so I'd love to hear though from you all since we last met, I want to do a quick recap. So we've really gone through the sponsoring steps in what I would call an order or a methodology. And it's really important that everybody understands that all of the steps up until the very last part is all necessary to be done in order. Okay. In other words, you don't, and I'm going to give you some examples. So you, I want you to buy into what I'm saying. So I'm going to show you this. In other words, I wouldn't call up uh, Twyla up there. I don't have a real, uh, you know, connection with Twyla. Now listen to what I mean by this. Mean, am I saying it wrong? Twila, Twyla. Well, Twyla, Twyla. Twyla. Okay. So what I mean is I wouldn't just call up Twyla and be like, do you want to join my team? She'd be like, is that woman nuts? Do you get what I mean? There was no curiosity about possibly what I was doing. I didn't offer to chat with her about possibilities. We didn't meet and talk about what was important to her. Do you guys follow me? So Twyla, at the, I just went to the end to step five and I didn't even do that very well but do you get where I'm going and what do you think Twyla did even just as a joke she went like this <laughs> <laughs> right because that is the big mistake that people make they start thinking in terms of I need a recruit has anyone ever felt that way I need to sponsor raise your hand come on get honest if you don't think that way you're not building a damn business all right good here we go Okay, so we've all been there. We maybe are, you know, running for a goal, a rank advancement, or maybe we're going for a trip and the requirement requires that we sponsor. In fact, sponsoring is so important to your business that if we don't sponsor, we don't build a business because with our own personal sales, which are important, but we're only one person and you can't rank advance in any company that I know without building a team. We would just be strong salespeople, which is not all bad, by the way, but I'm going to assume that all of you have invested to be here that you want more than just to be a strong salesperson. Is that right? Shake your head. Jameson. Yes. Jameson. Okay. We're going to in get Make me a co-host there, Sherry, when you get a minute. All right. So you guys get where I'm going with this. Do you see how awkward it is if I come out of the gates needing to sponsor? You get where I'm going? So we flip the switch, right? And by the way, books are in the mail. Today they went in the mail. It took a minute or two longer than what I had hoped, but they are in the mail. Well, I said books. Cards are in the mail. Pardon me. Okay. So the flipping the switch, what this means is we have to change our mentality from I need, we're going to flip the switch. We're going to turn the light on to what? Who knows? What's the mentality of any great recruiter or someone that's sponsoring someone into the business? Kelly down there with Kelly W. I get to invite people to have a more fulfilling life. Okay. Uh, meeting new people and adding to their family income. Okay. I get to basically what she's saying is help people solve their problem of a, you know, maybe they want more out of their life. So what else is that? There's one word that that is. We're going to go from, I need to, I get to, but what is it? Is it taking or 
What is it? There we go. Say it again, Kelly. I'm a good lip reader. Sir serving. serving. There you go. Serving. So when we can come from a place of service, Hi. we will win every single time. Now, if let's say Twyla saw my post and it talked about something that Twyla values. So Twyla, what made you want to do uh, network marketing or direct selling, however we want to call it? It's all the same, by the way, but what made you want to, dear? Well, I just joined because I uh, like the product. And, uh -huh. then, and then once I got started, I had lots of friends that wanted to do it. So I just want to help them get their... Get the life they want with yeah. food, make their life simple with menus and things. Okay, so do you see how she said she joined because the product, and then once she got into it, she realized she could help people as well. So imagine if part of my post said something like, and I'm just giving you an example. This is just a facetious example, but let's say my post said something about my amazing products. And then it went into the fact that I love helping people, you know, with food items, get more of what they want or simple um, recipes that they can do in a, you know, matter of moments, being a working mom, you know, you get where I'm going. Okay. And then tie it. Uh, Twyla comments and says, that sounds great or fantastic. Or she gives me a thumbs up or a heart, right? What then happens is she's now someone that no matter what she paid attention and that deserves a follow-up. Are you guys with me? Now I'm in relationship or I'm beginning to build the what? Connection. Are you guys following me? This is really important. A lot of people miss it. Some never get it. And then we start talking about what's important to her by doing what? We set an appointment. That's step two. Then we run through in a certain order, which is, that's what I'm so excited. I'm going to share the appointment with you today. It's all graphicked up and you're the first group I'm giving it to, uh, generic wise. And so... Do you get where I'm going at the end of all of that? And it's all about her. Guess what? Now I get to say, well, Twyla, you tell me, where would you like to go from here? Well, she'd probably say, you know what? I kind of like these products. I kind of like you. You've been pretty nice. And I think we'll go with it. You know, that's how it goes. But do you see the difference? People post in their kits and post and join my team, even using those words. It's a turn off. Have you ever been turned off by that? Yeah, of course you have. And when you see that, if someone put it in your inbox, even DM'd you, when I join my team and you don't even know them, you'd go like, oh, come on. Can they get a little bit more kind and friendly with me? That's what you'd be thinking, even if you don't say it out loud. And I know I'm right because I've done this long enough and helped enough people sponsor. So when you can understand that from your own perspective and then make sure that you look at the steps like, okay, well, where am I in this process? You're gonna sponsor because the end result is simply asking them really where they wanna go from here or I've got other ways to ask. Are you guys with me? Does this helpful? Does it make sense? Okay, good. So now, after that large, long introduction, <laughs> I want to hear some of the successes, and then we're going to deep dive into the appointment. We are going to be going over objections, but I'm also going to take a pause after the appointment, and we're going to talk just a little bit. Well, actually, I'm going to go... Uh, Let's see, appointment, objections, and then I'm gonna kind of do a little reverse engineering where we're gonna talk about your Facebook parties or your in-person parties or whatever you're doing, because it's all the same, by the way. Don't get too confused. But I'm gonna share with you how you can uh, layer in sponsoring seeds intentionally 
without being a Spamala Pamela. Are there any Pamela's on here? Okay, good. Do you get what I mean? So you're going to feel confident to be able to do what I'm going to share with you tonight. Really confident. You're never going to be armed better than this. Okay. I know this. I'm just going to claim it. <laughs> All right. Who wants to share a win? What have you overcome or what have you learned that is helping you with your sponsoring? Anyone can share. We'll hear from three people. Oh my God, everyone jump at once. It can be okay. anything. Okay, Kathy. Um, I did not have, I, well, I actually, I set the appointment and um, asked her about, I just, I set the appointment and we had a phone conversation and I loved your word. Uh, we connected for a little bit and then would you like to hear how a person gets started? And she just immediately opened up and said, yes. And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, um, and it was really exciting. And, um, you know, we talked a little bit about it and she got off the phone and she was ready to go. Then she talked to her husband. Um, and um so and sh this was actually a host that was having a party yesterday so this yeah. was, i was using it as part of my host coaching sure. um and she said uh, this was wednesday so the next day was thanksgiving i said why don't we connect on saturday anyways we're gonna chat before the party um and i asked her what time was good for her we set another appointment i said feel free to have your husband on speakerphone if he has questions too for me um and so on saturday when we chatted you know first we talked party we connected um and then i did another opportunity you know so would you like to hear you know jonathan would you like to hear more about how we can get natalie started and turn this into a grand opening party um and they both immediately said we want to hold off and i said in, so then i was like oh, shoot i wish we had the objections call already <laughs> um but um we had the party yesterday and it was delightful and um they it's the seed has been planted so yeah. it was good. here's what i want to make sure everyone hears um kathy good job thank you that's what i want to know that's what i want to hear that's what we all have to be doing let's give her a big round of applause yay everyone claps all right here's why because you're gonna get no's guys that's normal that's not like Kathy didn't do something right. Now, could there be something that maybe I could suggest to Kathy? Yeah, and I'm going to do it. But it's not that she did anything wrong. She did it all right, right? That's what I want you to feel. You're going to still get no's, even if, we, like, I still get no's. I get more no's, I guarantee you, than all of you guys. Do you know how I know that? Because I ask more people. I already know. I know, because I ask probably 10 to 15 people a day, a day. Okay, you have to be in front of enough people in order to get the yeses. But I never let the no tell me I'm not doing my job because why? Because I will serve and help anybody. And I firmly believe, and if you haven't written this down, write it down now, you cannot say the wrong thing to the right people. You can't. If someone is really meant to be on your team, they really are going to be somebody that's going to do the business. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. It will happen. Now, Kathy, I like your attitude. It's seed has been planted and it may happen again. Or, you know, they may revisit. Now I'm going to give her one tip and then I want to move on to the next one. And we got to roll because I got a lot of info today. Okay. Here's the tip. Wait one, just a second. Darn Alexa. Okay. So here's the tip. I heard Kathy say that when she got them on the phone, she said, do you want to know how to get started? Right? Which is, that's, that's still good. But what is going to be better? I'm going to share with you. Whenever there's a break between you and the potential sponsor or the sponsee I or no that's not right the prospect I don't know what you guys call them but anyway whenever there's a little break in it always always you guys taking notes because you ought to be always bring them back to what had them most excited right at the beginning of the call so 
it's not to say they wouldn't have still had their decision. And this is learning. This is why if you don't get out and do it, you're never going to get good at it. Okay. But here's what you do. You get them on the phone and, you know, Jack or whoever the husband, Josh, whatever his name was, you know, I'd say something like, so guys, um, you know, I know that you wanted to chat a little bit about the possibilities. Now, you know, Karen or whatever her name is, hey, I would love for you to um, just remind me, what was it that really had you thinking about this? What had you so excited? Because I know that you told me, but I don't know if your husband heard for sure. And I just want to kind of refresh where we were and what had you so excited? Because you know what she's going to start doing? She's going to go, well, what it was, was, blah. okay, now we just leveled up the energy on the call, didn't we? Because is that heart or head? Heart. But if I say, where do you want to get, or do you want me to tell you how to get started? Is that heart or head? Head. Okay, so you guys see it? I do this in a methodical way. You're going to see the four square in just a minute. And I think rather than, I want to hear from you guys, but I'm looking at the time and I don't want Sherry and Jen to kill me because I can tend to go over. I get real passionate and I would, I could be here till midnight with you guys. Truly, that's the way I feel about it, but we got to stay on course. So I'm going to share with you the four square and we're going to take a quick run through it. You're going to get a copy of it. Thank me later with a nice hug sometime when you see me. Okay. So can you guys see this? This is the appointment. Remember, we went over this, right? Who knows what step this is? Step one is what? Create interest. Step two is what? Set the appointment. Uh-huh. And then we have the appointment. This is that sheet that you're going to have in front of you, right? Okay. So I want you to see here how we go. Number one is to connect. Number two is success plan to get started. And I even prompt you with specific questions that you already know or that we went over a lot of them, not all of them. Okay, objections, but, you're, but today we're going over this thoroughly. So you're gonna get even more and then guide to decision. So I want you to see this guys, heart, what would this be? Head, head, and then heart. We're always going to start and end with heart. And you'll see how I rephrase in here, and then it allows me to come into here, and I'll show you. So I'm going to run through this rather quickly, and I'm going to pause after each one and ask if you have questions. That will be when you want to ask me any questions about that quadrant, okay? This is one page. You can mark it up. You can do anything you want on it. I suggest whenever you do a recruiting appointment, whether it's on Zoom, in person, or on the phone, that you have this printed out. And don't be shy about using it. The person that you're actually sponsoring will go, oh, she has a little guide. That's kind of nice. Do you get what I'm saying? Don't be like, I need to know all this by heart. It, it actually could stop your recruiting momentum you, it, it, not by not using it. And I'm going to tell you why. When you start getting really good at a skill, people get intimidated to join you. Right. So you, you kind of have to still play a little bit of a casual, you know, like I always don't love the details. I know details, but I don't practice them very well. That's the truth. Uh, but I know details. Does that make sense? But if I'm too regimented, people don't always want to work with you that much. It's too head. Do you get where I'm going? All right. So connect this portion. How are you? How was your day? Make it personal. Nothing about the company. Most people start this. Remember, what do they do? Who knows? How do people start a recruiting call? Wait, can I go ahead and answer your questions? That's over here in step three, remember? So we want to know about them. 
relax and get to know them for two to five minutes. All right, what got you thinking about joining? How did you like the, it could be a product, it could be a service, it could be the party, it could be a post. What did you think of the video? I don't know if you guys have that, but a lot of companies have short videos, okay? So what are we doing right here? We're getting them to tell us what they're excited about. Always ask open-ended questions, all right? How do you, and then now I kind of know she's excited. She loved the post, you know, and her energy's up here. And I say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to use Twyla because I started there. So I'd say something like, um, you know, Twyla, I just am curious. I know you've obviously thought about this and, you know, gosh, you seem pretty darn excited, but I'd love to know a little bit more about um, how you see yourself sharing the products. Now, I know you were at my party. Do you see yourself doing parties, vendor events? Do you like it online, in person? And then Twyla would say to me, whatever. Now I'm starting to know what's important to Twyla or how she sees herself doing the business, okay? How much would you want to make in or, you know, so then, then it, this is where I go into finding out like, okay, well, let's say you were going to do a business like this. What would you want to make to make it worth your while? Now I ask this immediately. Who knows why I would ask about money immediately? Anyone can share. I can't see you guys all. You but. can figure out about how much, how many parties they need to be doing or how many hours they need to be working. And then you can share that. Yes. And there, that is true. And there's also another reason why I ask about money, because I want to show that person the potential to make money. Some people that have never done direct sales before still have in the back of their mind that people don't really make very good money or they don't really make money doing this. They have a garage of products. You know, they hear the word, the horror stories, right? I want to show them that I believe they can make money. I want to know if the, if it was something they were going to do, what would they like to make? And most people hesitate. They usually kind of go like, well, you know, I, I, gosh, I don't know. And I say, well, let's just, you know, let's just play with it. If, if you could just write yourself a check, what would it be? Then they let go and start playing a little bit. And that's what I want them to do. Okay. And then we talk about how many hours they're willing to work, one to two in a day, three to four. You might even say in a work week, right? Okay. This is important. So you can show the prospect potential income based on sales and time. Well, money and time, really. Tell your story. Now, this is short and impactful. I'm going to let you guys just kind of see this always end on a high note. So if it's a brand new person, I'm going to talk about when I was brand new. I'm going to say something like, you know, gosh, Twilight, you know, when I first started, I could barely even pick up the phone to make the phone calls. So if you have any sort of little fear going on, no, I get it. But also know this. I know that what really helped me was I followed the company's success plan. And for 90 days, I committed to doing whatever they told me to do. And, I'm th and I thank God I did that or I wouldn't be here today. Couple of different things that transpired was within that first month, I was able to make back my kid investment. So I didn't have any husband or boyfriend or I don't know who I was with at that moment, but you guys get where I'm going. No one got mad at me. So I'm, I'm, I'm showing her some of the tips to what? Be successful, okay? And then I say, so what really has you most excited? What, do you, what, do, what would you say it would be? And I smile. People can hear your smile, okay? What really has you most excited? The majority of questions you ask cause people to think. Work on your question asking versus your telling, okay? All right, so then notice this leads me right into this next part. 
and you're going to need to curtail this to your company's stuff. So I might say something like, so if you were to do a business like this, would you like to know how to get started? Or, you know, it sounds like there's a good possibility that you would consider this. So I would love to show you how to get started. How's that with you? You know, just, I want her to say, yes, she wants to see it and she will. And then I might come in here and share the company's success program. I might share how she could earn her kit investment back. And I might share the benefits like fast start programs, uh, get paid twice a day, you know, whatever you feel are the benefits to your company, you might share these things. So you don't have to share all three of these, but you could. You could also share a little bit about the commission. Don't whip out a 12 page comp plan. You're going to lose them. The minute they start feeling overwhelmed, this is too much, you might lose them. So don't do that. Tip, avoid packets of things to read. Less is more, okay? Then we go into objections, which I'm gonna come back to this. So just pause there. And then we go into guide to decision. Now, at the end of objections, I say, anything else? What else can I answer? And usually we're, we exhaust them all, okay? So I might say something like, all right, well, gosh, what do you think so far? Or I come in here and I, I say, all right, well, gosh, you know, you tell me, Twyla, where would you like to go from here? On a scale of one to 10, where are you at? This is another way that you can kind of check their temperature. All right, and then, you know, some of these different questions. Um, I'm going to, uh, this actually is not quite updated all the way, I'm just noticing a couple things. So uh, I'll, I'll, I will have this back over to you. Uh, by the end of this call, I'm gonna send this right back to my assistant because there's a couple things, but I said I was gonna stop after each quadrant and I just kept on rolling. So now what I wanna do, and I'm right on pace, 628, okay. What questions do you have about that four square or those quadrants, the process? Anything come to mind? Does, do you think that will be helpful to you for your next appointments? Yeah? All right, any questions right now? Do you see how you take just a little bit, just a little bit and tell them how to get started or how they're going to make their first paycheck or how they're going to make money. But what we're not doing is we're not inundating them with every single thing they need to know about Tastefully Simple and getting up and running. You guys following me? That's the worst thing people could do. And sometimes when we're more head than heart, we think that everyone wants the exact information we want. I'm gonna tell you something about heart-based people. They don't want a lot of information. They want the bottom line. When you see somebody going like this to you, in a, that's why I like doing Zoom or in person. Mostly I do Zoom, obviously, because of you know the, the climate and I have a worldwide team. So I, they go, they start going like this. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means what? Who knows? Got to yell it out. I can't, I'm not, don't even see the lips. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. They're not okay. really listening. Mm -hmm. Or that's a good, that they, they might, yeah, I think they might be listening, but there's a, there's something else to this. Watch. Okay. Uh huh. You're losing their interest. Okay. It says move on. It's called move on. I gotcha. Have you ever went like this to somebody? Uh huh. Uh huh. And they keep going because they think they need to give you just a little bit more information. Oh, I'm only on step one. D it doesn't matter. Move on. Or you can ask a question. Now it's, I might say something like Twyla, it seems like you, you, you get this part. Yeah. And she goes, well, yeah. Uh-huh. Would, do you want me to explain the rest of this part or do you just want to move on? 
no, I want to move on. I actually, Joan, I kind of know what I want. Okay. That happens with A type personalities. It also happens with heart centered personalities. They don't want the details. Okay. Now we give them just enough, but when we start seeing anybody go like this, Sales techniques tell you, move on. Jen, why are you laughing so hard down there in your office? Yes. What's so funny? Because <laughs> I don't like too much information. I'm like, okay, move on. Move it on. Yeah. And, you know, these are, these are skills, even with a product. You ever had somebody like oversell one of your spices, 10 minute dissertation on a freaking steak spice, throw it on, tell them how it tastes, what meat you throw it on and be done with it. How many do you want? You know, somebody, oh, well, it's got the salt, the Himalayans and, you know, Maxine don't, and it's got this and, you know, what you want to do. I mean, my God, give me five and let me go. All right. Know that bottom line people and, and people also that are busy, you got to learn to read those cues, right? Okay, I'm spending a lot of time there, but I, that's a point I want to make because it happens in a recruiting interview all the time. And if you're unsure of what their body language means, just ask. It's all good. You can just say, you know, hey, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sensing you want to get going a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I do actually. I've got to, you know what? I got somewhere I got to be. Oh, okay. Well, let me just move through this a little bit more rapidly. It, trust me, if they want to know, they'll say, slow her down. Okay, pause. I have a question back on that. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go from the appointment four square into objections. And there were a lot of really good objections. And what I am going to do is I want to hear from three people that we've never heard from before who place their objections in there. I've got them. I have a screenshot, but I would like your, I want to hear your objection. And we are going to uh, work through these with the sheet I'm about to share with you. So who has one that they really want to work through? You had to have placed it in the thing, in the group, in the chat. Yep, Desiree. A lot of people say, I'm just not like you, Desiree. <laughs> okay, and, but what, okay, I'm not like you. What does that mean? And they mean because, I, because I'm very positive and outgoing. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Maybe they're a little more shy. Okay, so it could be like, um, I'm a little more introverted, or I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more quiet than you or something this way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And usually what follows that is what I'm really not a salesperson. You ever hear that? Isn't that mm -hmm. along the lines? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So let's just take it as, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not outgoing which really they're saying, I'm really not a salesperson, okay? Th this really is the same. Don't you think so? Desiree, mm -hmm. does it make sense? I want to make sure though, because I'm going to kind of- yeah. okay. So when someone says, I'm not like you, I say, well, then thank God. My God, <laughs> I got a lot going on over here. Hot mess in a lot of ways. You know, I make jokes. People People like fun. They like you guys seeing my cat on full on attack. Mm -hmm. Here we have Maxine. Yes. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and we're going to pull up the objections training. Now, I want you to get your pen and papers out. However, you are going to, just a second. You will be able to have this. I'm give, gonna give this to you. So I'm gonna email these to Jen uh, as well as Sherry, and you're gonna be able to have these. They, they'll put them in the group or whatever 
Um, here we go. Okay. All right. And I think you're going to like this. So. Wait, what's up? Just a second, you guys. Oh, it's opening up my entire Dropbox. Wow. Give me a minute. Can you guys see this or no? Mm -mm. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we, can, we can't see it. We just see you. Okay, good. All right, here we go. Perfect. Now we got it going. I'm glad it just opened up like 30 some odd deals here. Okay. Where is it? Just a second. Did it go there? No. All right, you guys. Sorry. Hang on. Give me a minute. I don't know what the heck. Happened. You had it. It's right there, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. I just had it downloaded though, and I prefer that because oh, it opens it. in a different way. Okay, there we go. Everyone can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's discuss objections, and and I'm going to take Desiree's first, but. But before we roll through this, I want to explain the full part of objections because this is really an important piece that many people don't know how to handle. And when you don't know how to handle an objection, you can either freeze, you can begin talking over the person, telling them why they shouldn't feel that way. And you'll see what I mean. So. I don't have enough time. I don't know enough people. I'm really not a salesperson. I'm not, we could write in here. I'm not like you, Desiree, right? Okay, so what I want you to understand is that objections are a sign of interest. So make sure that you're writing this down as we're giving you this because it's really important for your own brain to retain this. They're also an invitation to share more. What I like to think of an objection as is it's my opportunity to connect and understand them more, get on their side, okay? And the other thing that I've realized over the years is oftentimes people's objections are misunderstood information. So in other words, they don't know the K-N-O-W. Like when people go, is this a pyramid scheme, right? It's never a pyramid scheme because you have a product. You can't have a pyramid scheme with the product. You know, you happen to get paid in a way that's a, through a level comp plan. But that's not a pyramid. The pyramid schemes are things that end without a product or service being delivered, okay? Now, with that being said, if I don't get objections when I'm talking to somebody, I get a little bit concerned because that kind of tells me that maybe they haven't really thought this through. Maybe they haven't really pictured themselves doing it, right? So invite objections and flip the switch. If you get scared when somebody says, I don't know if I have enough time, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not like you, I don't have the money. These are good things. It's a sign that they're actually interested and they put themselves in the picture of doing the business. The other thing that I like to remember is that if someone gives me an, uh, gives me an objection, they actually feel safe enough to tell me it's not working out. You ever had somebody just ghost you? Yeah, I have. And well, that means it wasn't safe enough. They never got back to me or I never got back to them. They never answered. You know, that happens on rare occasion. But when it happens, it's because maybe they just felt embarrassed or they just didn't feel safe enough. So I always want to make sure that when an objection comes that you don't miss one of these steps. Okay, so here's the first step. Whoops, what the heck? 
Hello. Oh boy. We're on page two and I didn't even turn the page. Okay, there we go. So number one, acknowledge and validate the objection. So that's done by, I get it. I appreciate you sharing this with me. I can see where you're coming from. Thank you for sharing that. I can see why you'd think that. I get it. I always say that a lot. I get it because I do get it, right? And whatever you're going to acknowledge and validate, I want to make one really bold statement. It does not mean you agree with them, right? It doesn't mean you agree, but we're adults. And you are not in the business of convincing anybody. Now, I'm going to give you a little terminology that's helped me over the years. People are either moving closer to you, further away, or they're running for the hills. And trust me, you don't want them running for the hills. But I'm going to tell you something. Even I have had some people run from the hills, run for the hills from me. And it's usually when I've been not in a great place and I'm a little bit short or I'm not owning my own whatever, you know, I'm kind of getting a little all knowing maybe, who knows, but do you get what I mean? They're like, wow, that's a, that's a definite strong personality there. I think I'm going to back off of her, right? So think about that. You get to self-coach yourself and you get to ask yourself questions like, am I inviting someone to open up to me or are they starting to pull back right because that happens when we get a little assertive a little too assertive or even aggressive okay so we got to watch that so the validating part is the part that most people miss and it's the easiest part but if it's not done in order you'll miss so step two you ask questions to gain more understanding. So let's say, I'm really not as outgoing as you, okay? I would say something like, you know what? I, I get it. Yeah, I can see how you could think that. I see that you're a little softer than me or that you, you know, and repeat what you see in them. I see that you're a little bit more of a listener and actually, just so you know, that's a really good quality. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to put Desiree down, but I mean, I like to point out what the person is, not what I am, right? So I say, I get where you'd see that. And, you know, I can see that you're a person that's. So I'm agreeing with them, all right? And then I ask questions. And I might say something like, so gosh, you know, you tell me, how would it feel if you were sharing a product that you liked with people? Because you like these products, right? Yeah. Kind of like when you're at a restaurant and, you know, someone asks you, what's the best Italian in town? Could you tell them? Or do you feel even a little bit too shy to go down that road or whatever. I mean, do you get, I like to use comparison so they understand how they can use share, how they can take the, I'm not like you, the outgoing sting out of it by sharing with them that they're really already doing this with confidence on other things, right? Another way to show people sometimes is you know, have you ever thought about trying to get your kid to eat a little bit of broccoli or something like that, right? You know, tell me, how would you get them to eat it? You know, and they usually go, well, I just say, you know what, eat, eat the darn thing or what, you know, and, but the truth is you usually say things like, oh my gosh, you know what, that's your favorite or take two bites or, and then I say, well, look what you're doing right there. What? Well, you're actually selling your kid on the broccoli. You know, so you try that and show them in different ways where they may already be doing this anyway, okay? So ask questions to gain more understanding. So 
what if I told you that, you know, we do it like this? And then I might even say something like, you know, if you were to share a product like this, how would you share your excitement for, oh gosh, I don't know, Desiree, what's your favorite product? And then let's say she says, well, you know what? What I really loved at the party was blank. Great. So could you imagine telling someone you know, or maybe even someone you don't know what you love about it? Kind of like a waitress does when she describes the specials at the restaurant. Could you, could you see yourself doing that? So I just begin having a conversation. But the next most important thing that you want to ask her is things like, what is it that really makes you feel that way? Because usually what they'll end up telling you is, well, I just don't want to really bother people. And I don't, do you get what I mean? It's not really that they're objection is always about what you think it is. They're usually in a scenario where they've been hounded or bothered by someone. And then I might say something like, you know, what if I told you that you didn't have to do it that way? You know, we do it like this. Okay. So this right here is your time to build rapport and she's seeing that you're going to help her through a situation. Okay. And then the last part would be to rephrase it. So, you know, what I'm hearing you say is that if you had a couple favorite products, you do feel comfortable to share those with people, just the things you love about the products. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I've also had it guys. Let me stop share a minute where people have been nervous or a little bit, um, it's a word I'm looking for, you know, they're worried really that they don't have the training. Has anybody ever got that? You know, where I'm just, uh, I'm not a salesperson, but then when I start asking questions, it's like, I just don't really know how to share the products. Well, what if I told you that I could help you and you could come along with me either online or in person, or I could share a party outline or the cards. Do you get where I'm going? Okay. You guys are like, objections were gonna be a whole hour and we just went through one and we have 10 minutes left. Okay, I know that. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm actually gonna take a few of the objections that have been given to me because I, I do want to go into this last part and I'm going to actually uh, break them down for you. Okay. And I will send this to Sherry and Jen in the next day or so, the actual answers. You're going to have the process, but I'm going to take a few of those top ones from the sheets that you guys put your effort into and I'm going to put my effort back. All right. Does that sound like a deal? Okay. Because we got a couple things that are really important still left. All right, let's shift gears a minute. And now let's go to your parties. So I wanna just see a raise of hand. How many people do online parties? Raise your hand if you're an onliner, okay? How many people do in-person, okay? In-person, how many people do online and in-person? Okay, good. So we can speak to the masses because the things I'm gonna share with you are stuff that you maybe know, you may not be intentional, but I'm going to show you how to be intentional. And I'm also going to show you how to close every single time using the Savvy Pro Close. And when I give you the steps to this, you're going to be able to do it either online or in person. And I want to also tell you guys, I think I've done over 3,000 parties in my own days and my own times and my own ways over the years. Um, I also believe that I use the same outline for online as I do in person. I just do it a little bit differently, right? So if you guys are, you know, using your cards or you use that outline at the, the company and you, you know... Don't reinvent the wheel for one or the other. Just do it really similarly the same, okay? That's my first tip. All right, so now I want you to write on your notes. I want you to write opening, 
opening. And I'm going to just kind of, I looked over some of the materials that you guys use, but what I'm going to do is give you some tips in your opening, because really what I want to do is rewrite the outline, <laughs> but that wouldn't be right because you guys have good tools. So I'm going to just give you some tips that you can kind of filter in here. Okay. So if we need to open our parties on a high note, what would somebody think they would start with? Are you going to, what are you going to talk about? What do you, let's, let's just go over real quick. If this goes over, you can get off, but I'm still going. Okay. If you were to do your party, you guys are, who are doing them, what do you make sure you include at your opening? I want someone just come on, rattle it off. What do you always talk about? How easy the product is and how you can earn free product. Okay. So we talk about the ease of the product and free product. Okay. Excellent. What how delicious, delicious it is. Okay. We're going to talk about how yummy the product is. What else? I thank people for her coming and I thank the host. And then I also in that time, ask them what their favorite product is and, and to share that with the groups in the comments. Okay. Favorite product. All right. What else? I introduce myself so they get to know me better and feel connected to me right away. Okay. Intro and get to know you. Okay. What else? I also tell them I'm here to answer their questions to help save them time, money, and sanity. Okay. Answer the questions. So, okay. All right. Here's what I want you guys to switch it up a little tad. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to introduce yourself and thank the hostess. Okay, so when I introduce myself, I'd say something like, hi, I just know that I met everybody coming in the door. I do little things that make a big difference because I'm thinking always about connecting. I don't stand over in the corner. I've also been known to bring ice and I've done all kinds of things. I help out because why? Because I want to interact with the people. You know, some people like get set up and they go sit in the corner. Don't be that person. Be the person that that's getting involved and helping, you know, and just, just being a friend, right? So once I get there, I say, you know, I know I probably met all of you coming in the door or whatever I was doing. And then I say, but I'm Joan. And I want to just tell you a little bit about me and how I got involved with Tastefully Simple. Okay. The story sells. And guess what people connect to? You through the story. Now, here's what I want you to do in that story. You're going to say just exactly the truth. What attracted you to Tastefully Simple? Don't you think if something attracted you that it's going to probably attract them? Okay. What else would be important? People want to know about the money. And I guarantee you, I don't think you guys talk about it enough. They want to know that there's a potential to make money. You don't need to talk about being a millionaire. You don't need to talk about any of that. But you got to say, one of the things that was really important to me, because I already worked a full-time job, was being able to generate a part-time income and ultimately leave my full-time job to be there with my son. And although it was a dream in those first days, I followed the company's success plan. And guess what? Today, here's where I am. You, you see how that is? That is a sponsoring recruiting line if there ever was any. But that's part of my story. And it touches their heart because I didn't want to watch my kid get on that big yellow bus anymore. I want to be at home. And yeah, the first year was tough. I was working a heck of a lot of hours. But you know what? I was willing to sacrifice because I had a bigger dream. And then when I got happily involved, I couldn't believe it. I earned a trip and blah, 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 blah. Okay, condense that baby down. But the story is what sells. That's got to be at your opening. And then I say, and I want to thank uh, Tammy for hosting. Now, from me, and then I hand some 
you know, gift. From me, Tammy's going to earn the blah, blah, blah spices. But from the company, my last host earned da, 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 da. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes in person, I stack the hostess. I like to put the products on her to show how much someone earns. Online, I grab them out and I've done the same thing. So she's earned this and then she's earned this and then she's earned this. Now, all this package right here adds up to $87 in you know, free products and three half price. And you can pick any of those items. A lot of people pick blah, 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 blah. Now I just have what? Recruiting and bookings. Yeah. And I'm like three minutes into my party. Okay. Do you guys get where I'm going? Now, no offense, but I heard a lot of things like delicious, easy, answer questions, blah, blah. Those are important things, but they're not as important as your story. Got to fine tune that baby and thanking the hostess because that's a booking, right? You can do it in different ways, guys, but you got to do that right in the first five minutes, okay? And you could do it the other way around. Hey, I just want to thank Jen for hosting, for hosting Jen, blah, 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 blah. Now I want to tell you just a little bit about me and how I got started with Tastefully Simple. You can do it either way, but either way you're right. Okay. All right. Now I go to the middle. Do you guys, when you do your presentation, according to the cards in this, you do a little kind of demo, right? Okay. So in during your demo, <clears throat> if it's me, I'm going to be talking about how I earn these products for free or about how you know, maybe this was my favorite product and I love the fact that I can get it any old time I want because of blah, 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 blah. Or I might say something like, oh my gosh, and this, this product right here, what I love so much about this is this was just released at our company convention. And by the way, that convention was outstanding. They had this speaker there. She was so fun and cool. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I might say something like at the convention, that's where I got to meet with a bunch of people on my team and oh my gosh, we had such an amazing time. And then they announced this trip. Oh my gosh. And you know what? I got to tell you, I've never been one to set goals, but let me tell you what, I mapped that out and I'm going on my first trip or whatever. Do you guys get where I'm going with this stuff? They're all stories based on your products, your experience, because the experience and the stories is what sells. Okay. Now all of a sudden you're up to about three or four recruiting seeds. That's what I call them seeds, but it's just part of my story. And you know what? I don't even have to get too uh, like rehearsed because I remember the convention. I remember my last hostess and I know my products. And you talk about the products you love, just make sure the products you love aren't under $5. <laughs> you get where I'm going? Let's be honest, right? We wanna, we, wanna sell, we wanna sell the best of the best. All right, so now we're gonna go to the close and I promise I won't go too late, but if you do have to get off, I completely understand you can catch the recording. And that goes for anybody, even Sherry and Jen, cause I tend to do a little longer, but let's be honest, we're covering a lot tonight and I've stayed pretty darn good on track. Haven't I Sherry? Okay, good. She's giving me a little thumbs up. That makes me feel good. Jen? Okay, good. All right, so here's the deal. Now we move to the end. So you've got to make sure you've got sponsoring and bookings in the beginning, and you're going to get it in the middle. And now we're going to go to the end. Now, there's all kinds of ways that people wrap up at the end. And again, I'm, I'm not going to deviate from too much of what you guys do, but I'm going to give you a way that will help you double and triple your sponsoring appointments and ultimately recruit. When I taught my team this back in the early 2000s, this is how long I've been doing this and I tweak it to different companies. And even when I train it to different companies, it tweaks a little bit. This is what 
took my team from being about a number three or four team in the company to number one in the company for 12 years in a row. This process. And I've had companies want to buy it from me. And I say, no, it's mine. And I'm not giving it up for nothing because I wouldn't be able to train it again per se, right? I have to change it. I'm not doing that. So it's called the Savvy Pro Close. So I want you to write this down. And it can be written as simple as a three by five card to prompt you. And by the way, I'm all about the notes. If you have notes at your party, congratulations, congrats. You should be doing that. If you know your party so well, you don't need notes, you're not recruiting. I probably guarantee you that. You've got to do a little mess up or a thumb up or someone doesn't think that they could ever do it like you. Remember Desiree? She said, oh, I don't know. Desiree's got to find a way to kind of be a little bit awkward about something because if she's too good all the time, she won't recruit. Isn't that the truth, Desiree? I know it is. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely awkward. Well, but you get what I mean. I bet you there's some people in here where you get so good at it, your passion lowers down, you get really into skill and no one thinks they could ever do it like you. You don't want people to think that. You got to be a little bit off, just a tad, I'm just saying, okay? I tell you, when I forget the toner at that time, I, I was doing it so good and then I forget the toner. Did I tell you guys that? Oh yeah, then I got like three appointments that night. <laughs> I was dry for like two parties. I'm like, what's going on? I realized I was doing it a little too perfect. You know, I just had that baby down. Okay, you, you don't want to have the baby down that close. All right, so here we go. At the end of the party, everybody just saw all the items. So I say something like this. Oh my gosh, again, uh, Tammy, it has been such a pleasure getting to know you and all of the guests here. And I wanna really make this simple for everybody, okay? There's three kinds of people here, three kinds of women, men, whatever you wanna say, three kinds of people. There's those of you that want to spend money. <clears throat> and for those of you that want to spend, so write down number one, spend. Um, you know, I'm going to give you my link. I'm going to pass out the catalog, whatever you do. And you're going to have an opportunity just to um, buy the products. Or I'm going to be set right up over here at Tammy's end of her table. Or I'm going to be taking online orders, whatever you're going to say, right? And you can spend away happily. And remember that special, by the way, we got that host special, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So there's a second kind of woman here who wants to save money. Now, remember, like you saw Tammy with that, you know, $85 or $125, whatever it is, a free product, you too can have a little gathering. We can do this online. We can do it in person. And I'm going to help you earn free products just like Tammy. Okay. So I will help you save and, and get the free stuff. Okay, and then there's the third kind of woman here who likes to make money. So number one is save. Number two is, I mean, I'm sorry, spend, save, and then make. Okay, now for those of you that like to make money like me, you want to see your bank accounts getting big and fat. You want an extra 500 or 1,000 a month or more. Then at the end, which we're right there right now, um, I'm going to work with you one-on-one -on -one to check out and I'm going to offer you an opportunity to either get on my calendar to host a party or you may want information around the business. And if I don't ask, you get free shipping. Now, I do something like that. I always have done something like that. Who knows why? Too big of, Angie? Too big of an offer not to do it then. Okay. Too big of an offer not to do it. Okay. You're on, the, you're on the hook to ask. I'm on the hook to ask. You know, for the most part, I'm going to tell you, I've gotten in the habit of doing this, but it holds me accountable to not chicken out when I see the lineup. And guess what? They know that's how I do business. Right? And so there's no sting in it. I already just said, if I don't offer you, so I look them in the eye 
and I say, I've got a couple dates available right here, right now that I could offer you, or we could sit down and talk a little bit about the business. What do you say? Or what do you think? Or which one would you like? You know, and often they tell me, no, 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 no. And then all of a sudden I get, you know what? I, I, I would like a little info, you know? I don't want to tell you in front of their friend or you ever have anyone take you near the bathroom. You know what? I kind of want the info, but I kind of don't want everyone to know. Okay, yeah, great. Right? You guys are laughing because you know what I'm talking about, right? But no matter what, I offer every single person every single time. And I'm going to leave you with this thought. I am telling you the truth that this little skill in and of itself will have you sponsoring like you've never sponsored before because you're taking the energy of prejudgment out. How many of you looked there at the whole lineup or of the eight people on your Zoom and you've been like, she will, she won't. Oh God, no way, not him. She would, uh, no, not asking her. She's got a full-time job. You get where I, you all do it. I do it too. You have to force yourself to not be all knowing because guess what? You do not know. And I'm going to tell you in my research of all those parties I've done, I have been wrong more than right. When people say yes to me, I think I would have never believed that person was going to say yes to me. And when they say no, I can't believe it. I think, my God, she would have been so good. Right? That happens more than not. And I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. Well, this shows me I'm not. Because sometimes the most least likely person, the quiet one that doesn't even say a word, is your next uh, business builder. And, and I think I told you guys about that lesson I learned, right? About the gal. Yeah. Okay. We won't go into it again, but you get the drift. That was all I needed to happen to me to make a change. And that was the best change that I ever made in my business. And it doubled and tripled my sponsoring. Okay. Now that's to get her on the books for an appointment. Never leave somebody without, I do a paper calendar, you do whatever you want. Never leave the, the party without a penciled date at the very least, even if you're online. If they say yes to you, you be prepared. Do not be like some of these people that have one toe in the foot. I mean, one, you know what I'm talking about, one foot in the tub and they go, oh, well, get back to you. I'm going to check with my husband on the dates. That is not a business woman or man. It is not. That is called an unorganized business person or man. You got to go to the party with the time frames. You already know what you're going to offer people. You're going to assume people are getting on your calendar, right? Am I too hard on you guys? <laughs> my veins are coming out in my neck. <laughs> but this is how passionate I am about this because Guys, I know as I know, if I can give you all these tools, if you use them, you're going to start sponsoring again. If you don't, they're just tools. That's the truth. Because I can give you the best training. I could, you know, do it all. If you don't do the work, if you don't take the action, nothing happens. So here's your action steps for today. There's a lot of information. And I just want to make it really easy. I want you to book appointments. If you're confident, I want you to put two appointments this week. If you're a little tentative, then you go for one. Okay. Action number two. I want you to perfect the opening, the middle, and the closing. Just get some three by five cards, you overthinkers, just get going, get it on your paper and write out a few of the benefits. Okay. And just have those things so that you feel armed with what I would call a strong opening, the middle 
And then you just got the savvy pro clothes. So you got to work it out on paper. You got to try it on your kids or your husband or in the car when you're all alone or whatever. I do a lot of it in the shower. I'm like, hey, blah, you know, as I'm washing my hair, because I don't have to think about it, right? Practice it. All right. And the third thing. You guys ready? Is to read over both the documents. So make a commitment that you will actually read over both the documents and then put them in a safe place and begin using them. Okay, you're going to have a, an appointment. And if you, for some reason, don't get an appointment, let's just say it didn't work out this week, then you phone a friend or you get someone to do the appointment with, even another team member. Okay, don't plan that right now, by the way. You want to go for it, okay? But I want you to, to you got to practice because if you're not in practice, you'll never gain the confidence, okay? All right, questions at 712. Mm. Questions? Was this helpful? All right, I like hearing that. Any questions? Will we get these sheets? Yes, you will, right, very soon. Love it. Good. Oh, I like that. All right. Seriously, any questions? No? You guys all, you got it all? Feeling pretty good? All right. Twyla, thanks for joining my team. No. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to kill it at Tastefully Simple. No. <laughs> you guys are like, well, I'd like to see Joan do a Tastefully Simple party. I could do one. I can guarantee you, I'd be talking about that sunny lemon pound cake. I know I would. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, I'm going to get these out to the girls. I do need to make a couple edits. So give me just a minute.